All right, guys, to uh, start us off, um, if you ever are on social media and you're trying to look for me, you want to see my face, you'll see a little blue robot, a very poorly drawn one. Um, and also, the link to the slides is up there. You can follow along in real time if you need to that. Um, uh, and Zephraf is my handle for everything, uh, except in Instagram, where it's two H's, but you'll see my click it. It's kind of jaded about that. All right, so I animated it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to talk about, well, this is actually a lie. I was going to talk about supercharging your single file components, but I thought about the audience and what people might know and may not know. So I took a step back and decided I'm going to make this uh, a little bit more about like what <coughs> component or single file components really are, um, how they're used, and hopefully at the end I'll kind of guide you into or through my exploration of adding new features to single file components. So it's going to be both a mix of uh, 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 intro and kind of you know technical at points. So a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Justin Bennett. I am uh, a front-end architect or the front-end architect at Scripps Networks Interactive. Um, so I work on you know foodnetwork.com, hgtv.com, all these great brands, um, and I spend a lot of my time thinking about how I can make things easy. Um, how can I uh, enrich our developers' lives? How can I bridge gaps between engineering and design? Um, how can I make the, the process of creating new experiences an experience in itself, right? Uh, bringing that value to uh, our engineers on the organization. So like I said earlier, um, it, it's kind of just motivates them to, to create bigger and better things. Um, so it's good for them and the organization. Um, so historically, uh, when we think about this kind of transition of how we think about building UI on the web, um, it used to be, you know, we had this notion of separation of concerns and we were talking about, you know, uh, how we organize our CSS, how we organize our JavaScript or HTML. Um, we had radically different focus. So we would think about um, think about the web in terms of pages, and, and now, especially you know, since the advent of React, it's really about let's take all the things that are important and kind of bundle them up together, um, and, and just focus on what the real concerns are. What are we trying to build, and how can we focus that? And I, I really recommend this talk, um, let there be peace on CSS. It talks a lot about uh, different approaches of um, you know combining uh, or, or rethinking about the separation concerns, especially when it comes to CSS. Um, so single file components are something that made me fall in love with you. Um, it's not the only framework out there that does it, um, but I think they still do the best. Um, and then props again, it's awesome. Um, so you have this file, which will be a .d file, right? Um, and you can have a template block, a script block, and a style block. Um, and it's, it's absolutely magical. So this is, this is one component. You, know, you can import it into some other component, like you would a React component, but um, there's kind of some machinery behind the scenes that will kind of suck it up and turn it into something. Um, and it also does awesome things, like it has a scoped attribute for the style block, um, and that will automatically append, like, um, a date, uh, like a data view attribute uh, to actually make it specific to your component, um, which is just amazing. Um, dealing with CSS can be a real pain. Um, so what is this machinery that like takes this file on my hard drive, this view file, and turns it into whatever the JavaScript and CSS that like finally is supposed to represent this is? Um, so for those of you who have never touched Webpack or don't know that you're even using Webpack, um, it's one of the primary tools uh, to do this transform. Uh, it's not the only one uh, browser files out there, but... Uh, uh, so Webpack specifically uses view loader to <coughs> transform the view files into the, sub or the correct uh, CSS and JS. And uh, I grabbed this top quotes 
from uh, Webpack's documentation, um, loaders are just transformers. So all they do is they take in some source code and they emit something, right? Um, and I, I really recommend looking at the new Webpack documentation if you use it at all. Um, it's great. They have a lot of guides. They put so much effort in there. And if you find something that can be like made better, just like get involved. It's, it's an awesome way to learn. Um, so really the heavy lifting is done by Vloader, right? So you configure it, it's like, hey, I've got you know this .v files I want to consume. It pulls them out, separates them correctly into primarily JavaScript. Um, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, so helpful hit number one, if you're setting up a view project, um, especially with the Webpack and Webpack Loader and everything, use View CLI or this library called Toy. Um, there's a, a member of the community called Egoist, and he is um, he's a wizard, and he makes new things all the time. He wrote Poi. Poi's awesome. I played with it a little bit. I think UCLI is going to adopt some of the Poi features, so more to come there. That'll be awesome. Anyway, if you're setting up a new web project, especially if it's a new project, that can be a really monumental task. So you know, kickstart yourself. Try to learn from the configs. Don't just use them without knowing what they do. Um, it's very important that you kind of at least have a, a simple grasp of what's going on. All right, so let's look at this example again, right? So, so how do you think it works? Like, how do you think it turns this template, the script tag, and the style tag into something that you can push to the browser? Because it sure as hell doesn't use a view file. I wish it did. That'd be awesome. But it doesn't. Um, and so I started off this journey by asking myself, well, what does it do? Um, and my initial thoughts were like, well, so I read in the documentation that it takes this template block, this, you know, the contents inside this template block, and turns them into a render function. So imagine if you wrote this component in React using JSX, it'll do a very similar thing at the end. So I was like, okay, so it'll take this, it'll use uh, Views compiler and turn it into a render function. And I thought, it probably parses the script tag and like builds an AST, an abstract, abstract syntax tree, and figures out where everything's at and like interjects it in there somehow. And I was like, man, I bet that's really complicated and really difficult to deal with. And then the styles, I was like, nah, I don't know, that's, that's black magic, it's weird. I'm glad that it works, but man. Uh, so what is it really? Um, funny enough, out of the box, it all is just JavaScript. So it does, well, let me, let me talk about this a little bit. Um, each side, these are the same things. One is the left side, your right side, I guess, is post webpack, post view later. And then the other side is obviously the original. So you can kind of see this, I've simplified it a little bit so it's not exact. Uh, the output from webpack can be kind of gnarly. Um, you can see it takes in blue on the top the template block and it turns it into this standalone module. Um, and the standalone module has the reader function, like expected. The interesting thing is, it's not doing any crazy parsing of the actual script block to figure out how to inject it in there. So, you know, that's cool. Um, the script block itself, again, another module, um, and whatever you would have in there. Um, interesting note, uh, this, this caught me a few times, and Evan, you might have to correct me if this has changed, but I think you can only export a default from the script tag, but you can't do a named export because it... Currently, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that was a... We might support it in the future. That'd be cool. That is a, a trick me up because I like to uh, export all my functions so that I can you know, test them individually or whatever. So anyway, that's a gotcha there. Um, and then the style tag I thought was interesting as well. So hey, look, it's another module. Um, they're doing some Webpack does some other black magic here that I don't quite understand, but you know, at the end of the day, it's all JavaScript. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, now obviously, this is you know straight out of the box, like no extra tools around this. Um, if you actually use uh, single file components in production, um, there's a plugin called Extract Text Plugin, which will take your JavaScript compiled module of CSS and actually make it actual CSS, so you're not you know, doing CSS and JavaScript without actually meaning to do CSS and JavaScript. Um, so that's awesome, but, but what more can we do? So, 
I was kind of on this journey in learning about single power components and like what they did, how they worked, and what was outputted. And I was like, man, this is so awesome. There's all these problems that I've been trying to solve specifically at work. It's like, how can we make the, like, how can I use this to solve some of our problems? Um, and I'll talk a little bit about kind of this project that we went through not too long ago. So we have six main brand sites, right? Um, they're all built on a CMS, um, and they were on separate platforms. And we had to, we went through this big effort to kind of pull them all together and put them on the same platform. And you know, it's a challenge. So I've got all these components that were built individually that are like very similar across all these projects. It's like, okay, well, how do I create reusable components? So we had to go through the process of figuring out, you know, how do we use or make one component? and style it for six different projects. That's like not something you have to do a whole lot. I mean, you know, somebody come talk to me about like plugins uh, or, you know, SAS themes or something, but it, it's, it's much more complicated than you would think it would be. Um, so I, I had that kind of in the back of my head and I, I ran across this like little nuance of single file components um, by accident. And, and it really makes sense in hindsight, but you can have multiple style blocks in a single file component, right? And it's partially probably due to the fact that you can scope or unscope a style block. So you could technically have a style block in a component that has global styles. Um, so you can kind of add all of these style blocks. I was like, hmm, you know, that's really interesting. I wonder, I wonder could we support multiple brands out of the box um, in a single file component. So, you know, this is this is kind of what I started thinking about. And this is this is actually one file, so just imagine it uh, you know, aligned. Um, so I was like, you know, if I had this button, this like really contrived example that I was building, and I wanted to share it across like HTTP and DLI in our, in our case, it's like, how would I do that? So, you know, I, I would probably have this style, this like shared styles at work. We actually have this concept. We call them white label styles. And we share these base white label styles across all of the brands. And I was like, you know, and then I would have these extra style blocks. Um, and they would be very targeted to the brand that we're building. But, you know, it's like blowing my mind. It's like, but how do I run my build and, and get the correct CSS files to generate and like, how does even view loader like pull out CSS to begin with? Um, so you know, I just ran this through view loader. Like, right, we'll just see what, happens, what works. Um, and it turns out view loader doesn't care. It's like all your CSS. So really, uh, you know, in this particular case, what comes last is what you know what has uh, the highest specificity in this case, I guess. Um, so you see the DIY style is kind of overriding the HTTP styles. So I was like, okay. Well, you know, that's something that I can work with, at least. You know, I know um, I know that everything's getting output, that it's not choking on my theme attribute. Um, so, so how do I build this? Um, or really, what does view loader do? Like, how does it work? Like, what are the things that it does that it um, And my journey brought me to view template compiler. So I actually dug down and deep into the internals of view loader and was like looking at how it like, uh, actually did its compilation, the parsing and everything, because Lord knows I don't want to do that. Uh, and I've got a little snippet here. This is actually from the NPM documentation of uh, YouTube Template Compiler. And I was like, oh, there's a parse component function. It's like, we're in business. It's like, I could do something with this. Um, I will note, don't do this. This is like not the right way to go about solving this problem. This is just like how I started my journey on it. So, um, <laughs> I can kind of give some more information later in the talk about uh, you know, proper ways to go out solving this problem or similar problems. But this is where I was at, right? So I was like, okay, so you know, I've got my single file component. It's just like uh, cut off here, but pretend the rest of it's there. Um, and then I just like put together like this little test um, just to say, you know, what, what's the output? Um, and again, uh, the example here, the JavaScript example, is like very contrived. Uh, you obviously have to import your template loader, and you have to read in your .view file and turn it to a string and pass it to the parse component. There's you know all this stuff that you still have to do. But you know, I, I, I did the little experiment there, and then I got this beautiful piece of JavaScript. So it's like this awesome object. Um, so it's got the template, 
it's got um, well, each of the blocks, right? And it's also had this custom block thing, which is called for later. Um, and it had, you know, this array of styles. And the thing I was most excited about, well, actually disappointed with, let me back up, is when I started working on this, there was no attributes. Um, that was an output. Uh, so I didn't know what theme there was, um, which was unfortunate. So I actually went through a whole uh, process of, of figuring out how this worked and where things were pulled from. And I actually tried to make a pull request. And the first time I did a pull request, I changed the generated file, the build file, instead of like the source file. And I like posted up and, and it was like, ah, that's not right. This is actually what you're looking for. So I had to back up and like, you know, learn how that worked. And, you know, I got my first PR for Vue merged on Vue Template Compiler um, to open up, uh, or to read attributes. Um, one thing I'll say is, like, if you really want to learn something, like, contribute to it, like, dig in, go deep. Like, that is how you really start to understand something. Not even not even on, like, how do I use this and what are the cool techniques I can use, but, like, performance. And, like, there's just all these things that you can learn. And then, you know, you can come up here and share with everybody else. It's very experience. Um, anyway, so after the PR was merged and everything, it's like, now I'm in business. Now I know um, what uh, attributes I have. Now, I, I will back up and say that didn't actually stop me. I just started doing manual parsing, and it was not fun. Um, so I'm glad this works. Um, so, you know, I was going through my thought process. I was like, all right, so I had this information, right? I got my component file. I probably know what theme I'm wanting to build for. Um, and I know what attributes there are. Um, so basically, all I want to do is like when I build this thing, uh, probably just want to cut out the brand that I'm not building for. So just split out DIY in this case. So so you know this is this is probably uh, an easy enough approach. So um, this is kind of my idea, right? So got Webpack running. I was like, all right, well, I'll pass things through a loader that I write, and then pass them into Vue Loader, and then Vue Loader can do whatever with the result. And then that'll give me, you know, all the CSS and JavaScript magic that Vue Loader does, and I don't have to like think about that. So um, I had to figure out, like, all right, how do you write a loader? So Webpack loaders, uh, yeah, we're gonna learn this today. Um, and they're actually really simple. Um, it's basically just a function that returns a source, right? So it passes in a source and it returns a source. Now. There's more nuance to it than that. Obviously, it's got a very robust API. You can do all this async stuff if you want, and you do some like really crazy stuff. But I mean, you know, at the basic level, we have that passes in module code, and then we return some transform source. And that's kind of it. I was like, oh, wow, that's fascinating. Uh, I can do something with that. So uh, I have this project, uh, View Theme Loader. You can check it out on my GitHub. Um, it's really well commented if you want to see what I did. It's also not necessarily the best it could be, so help me improve it. Um, I know there are a lot of things, like I, I wrote it in TypeScript because I personally like TypeScript a lot, and uh, you know, I stubbed out a lot of types that I found later, so you know, it's, there's stuff to do. Um, so yeah, this is, this is all the implementation details are hidden, obviously, but this is like the implementation of this Uthing Loader plugin. So basically it takes in, um, source, and then it gets uh, my theme um, from the options, and I can explain that in a second. And then it just removes the themes that I'm not building for. So if I'm building for HGTV, just kill DIY, just remove it entirely. Basically, it takes a string, just replaces it with a space, returns the source, and that's it. Um, and then when Webpack gets it, or when Vloader gets it, it's like, ah, well, you know, there's some white space here, but man, you know, whatever, I'll just continue along. It's like, that theme was never in there to begin with. So it's kind of the basics of how I got that working. Um, so I will have some links later about um, looking into the Webpack loader documentation. I was going to go more in depth about Webpack loaders and all things you do, but I just didn't think I'd have time. So um, anyway, I cut it down a little bit. But. <laughs> Uh, all right, so that's that's not the only thing I'm going to talk to. Thank you for bearing with me. Um, so there's also this feature um, supporting custom blocks. This is actually what I was going to do my talk on. This is what I wanted to talk about, but I didn't think I could get there without talking about all the things that come before it. 
Um, so I'd rather spend the time on that so you kind of get a better understanding. Um, so Vue supports custom blocks. What that means is you have a template, you have a style, you have a script, but you could have docs, or you could have unit tests, or you could have GraphQL, or you know whatever you want, right? Um, so this is something that I've been playing with recently. Is like, how do I do um, inline GraphQL? It's like that, that'd be really cool. Like having my queries not in this really nasty nested view Apollo object structure. Like I just want to write my query, and you can build whatever object you want. Um, this is also something that before I started looking into how view loader really works and what Webpack does with the modules. Like, I had no idea how I was going to do this. It's like, I'm going to have to parse this JavaScript, like, I don't know, reuse like a Babel plugin or something, and then like figure out how to inject this in this object. Um, but it's a lot easier than that. So, again, going back, thinking back to a loader, a loader is just a function that returns source. Technically, you can create your own module, node module, or in this case, Webpack module, um, and have it kind of do whatever, but with a custom block, the component instance actually gets passed to the module. So you can just have access to it and decorate it however you want. Um, I don't have examples of that. I was going to put some in there, but time-wise. Um, but <clears throat> check out the view loader docs. Hell, check out all the docs in view, every project. They're amazing. Um, and if they're not, make them better. It's, it's wonderful. Um, so yeah, the, the more how the uh, GraphQL loader works, it, it doesn't take the backwards approach like I was doing. View loader actually has hooks for other loaders, right? So you can just configure Webpack with this loader's object and say GraphQL is this package or whatever. Interestingly, you can also overwrite default things like CSS is actually doing this, or JavaScript is actually CoffeeScript, because that's great. Um, yeah, so anyway, you know, you like, Loading loaders with loaders, it's kind of awesome. Uh, so, you know, you can do a lot of stuff with it. I, I've got links in the docs. Obviously, I'll uh, send out um, some resources at the end of this. You can kind of go read stuff for yourself. Um, but that's it's kind of as deep as I'm going to get. Um, if anybody is interested in like learning more, I would like, love to do a workshop or something sometime. So, come talk to me and let's see if we can organize something. Um, I do want to talk about Pitfall for a second. Uh, or, Pitfall's a bad word. This is an opportunity to contribute to the community. Um, there is a issue open on the awesome VS Code plugin viewer um, that is requesting support for custom blocks. So we could have syntax highlighting and auto completion for GraphQL queries. And that could be a thing. Can that can happen. Um, check out that issue. Help. Um, again, read the docs. Webpackjs.org. Wonderful. All the view docs, wonderful. Um, and then resources. These are all links, but you can click on them when I send out the slides. Um, and that's all I have. Uh, does anybody have questions? Oh, dynamic theme loading. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's something I've been thinking about a lot. So, the, the pitfall of the approach that I took was that um, it requires you to do multiple webpack builds, right? So, I have to configure on each build what, what the theme is that I'm building for. Um, so one thing that you could do is um, maybe decorate your CSS with a wrapper class, like theme blah, um, and use a webpack or use a loader that's like a preloader, which vLoader supports, to go in and you know basically decorate your template with like some functionality. Uh, uh, still thinking about it. It'd be great to talk about it. Brainstorm. I mean, it'd be easy to do just like straight view, right? So you just have like a wrapping element that's like powered off of a you know, variable. Uh, thanks, Jess.